Welcome to the Coach Cameron Soccer Podcast. On today we have uh, Paul Allen, the head coach of Brophy. They just won state title, the state championship once again. And uh, Paul joins us. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. So uh, I'm uh, trying to talk to uh, as many uh, coaches and players out there as possible as we're quarantined to our houses. So um, I'm killing time by doing as many podcasts as, as possible. Tomorrow I have the assistant coach for San Diego soccer, Renee Ortiz, and I'm on with Jessica McDonald. And then later tonight I'm on with Chris Scotty. You know Chris. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he'll he'll be on at 9:30 uh later tonight so I'll listen to that one. <laughs> yeah, but, you know Chris has a wealth of information. The guy should do his own podcast. He knows everybody or at least claims he does. Uh mm-hmm. pretty so, good player there. So Paul, uh you guys won state again at Brophy. Uh, this is uh the second one you've won in a row? Correct. And uh what tell 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 me what's the difference between last year's state championship run and this this year's state championship run. Well, um, I mean, I, I, it's not a whole lot. We we returned eight guys that played in the finals last year, so we didn't um, we didn't have to change too much. I mean, we had to change where he played. We lost the Gatorade Player of the Year, who's a center back. So, but we brought in some new guys that were pretty good and. Um, my biggest thing, as you know, uh, coaching with me is discipline and getting everyone on the same page. I think if you can do that, at least in high school, you can do a lot of things. So uh, we 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 had a good team. We had a good good group of boys that um, was some talent. And you know, for me, I'm only as good as the players I coach. To be fair, so yeah, I I've had a a ton of great players at PC. But we keep screwing it up over there. But uh, I guess it's probably lack of discipline and lack of dorms. But um, I would. I would... Uh, junior college is weird, as you know, because you don't. I mean, you're bringing in kids that could play Division One, and there's reasons they're not. Yeah, I, I wish I had the luxury of dorms where I knew where they were. Well, I think that would. I think that would help a ton. Yeah, <laughs> they could go get them. Get to school. Um, so. Uh, Back to Brophy. So, how how long have you been the head coach of Brophy? Uh, this year was my fourth year. Fourth year. So you've as head coach. As head coach. So you won two state titles, and three years ago you guys lost in the finals. Correct. Correct. How wh- how'd you do on your first year? Uh, I lost in the semis. So you went to the semis to the finals, and now you're back to back. How many uh, returners do you have? coming in next year uh i mean we we had 18 seniors so <laughs> oh we're losing a lot but we had six kids that were under class and playing the finals this year so it'll be uh it'll be an uphill battle but i mean i'm not i would argue that we're going to be right in the mix again we got some good young players coming up and that's kind of what i try to do is make sure that my jv and freshman levels are are stacked with players that can come up and that's why we pull kids up to play at the end of the year with varsity so they can kind of get a taste of it. And, um, but there's some other good teams out there. So it'll be, it'll be fun. So you've had a lot of success at Brophy and you attribute a lot of that to getting everyone on the same page and discipline. So let's talk a little bit about discipline. What are, what are things that you do that, um, you think uh, would be helpful in any program when it comes to discipline? I make the kids accountable. I don't, I don't show up early to practice. Um, I used to, used to be the first person out there an hour early, but, um, and, and not that I don't have a plan as a coach, but I want the kids to, it's their program, it's their team. So I make them set everything up. I make them get there early. I, I unlock it and then I'll walk and go get a coffee for 30 minutes or something. But, they got to be the ones that kind of run it because if, if they're not all, if it's not coming from them and it's coming from me all the time, it gets old. And, 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 you know, as a head coach, um, harping on kids and then you're the bad guy. And then, then it's like, are they really listening? You know, now you're preaching, now you're the dad. So I, I make them do their thing. You know, we did a ring 
advertising and they set it up and they did it at Starbucks yesterday. I had nothing to do with it. And that's kind of, to me, it's, it's your team. Figure it out. Right. No, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, very important to give them ownership over the program. So let me ask you a question. When someone falls out of line, how, how's it dealt with? Well, uh, it's a tough question, actually. It's because, I mean, it's obviously we're brophy, so we, we, we have a standard that we set, you know, that, that has, that's bigger than athletics. Um, for me, there's, it's everything, everything that we do is bigger than us. It's, it's not about soccer. It's about who we are as people, what are, these kids are going to become men and, and develop into this world. And how are we dealing with that? You know, and, and obviously we're a religious school. So there's, there's an involvement of a, of a higher power there too. So for me, it's, there's a line and, and I don't, you know, luckily I haven't had to deal with that line too often, but, um, kids make mistakes. They're still kids, you know, and, and you try to, if they do tow that line, you try to you try to correct it, and hopefully it doesn't happen again. So, it, let's say, what's one of your most basic rules that maybe your your team puts together, like showing up on time? If punctuality, all right, if punctuality. That's it for me. I'm. Uh, I grew up in a military area. You know, my my family's big military, so if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Right. Um, and, and just carrying yourself as a, as a respectable individual, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a big bench person. How you act on the bench? Are you, are you cheering on your teammates? Are you yelling at the ref? Are you the kid that sit and, sits and pouts? And so, you know, this year we implemented, you know, we lost in the first round at the Western showcase and in my opinion, we shouldn't have lost, but at halftime, I implemented everyone on the bench stands first 10 minutes of the game. You're going to stand, you're going to cheer your teammates on, and you're going to be a part of the game so that you're engaged. So it, do your, do any of the personnel, are, are, they, are they involved in any discipline, like the captains or anyone, or, or is it directly you deal with it, they bring to your attention? What? How, how, how I, does I usually, it work? if there's something that goes on, I usually will sit with my captain and say, "What do you, What are your thoughts?" And obviously, it depends on the severity of it. Um, if it's an in-house thing, the captains deal with it. You know, there's kids that show up not wearing the right shirt because we all we all wear the same stuff. You know, every everybody wears either black, black, red, or you know, white, white, black, or they're always on the same page. If there's kids not, I, I let the captains kind of deal with that. So that I'm not, like I said, I don't, I'm not trying to play dad or stepdad or I don't want them to hear my voice. Too. They hear it enough on the field. So um, they need to be in charge of their own kind of destiny. They're, you know, you're 17, 18, 16 years old and, and mommy and daddy aren't going to be there in a little while. So for me, you need to become a man and, and you got to start dealing with that. How's uh, alumni? Do you have a lot of alumni that come back and, and come to practice or come to games and say hello? How's that relationship? Yeah, <laughs> Too many, actually. <laughs> I have to limit it sometimes, um, especially during break. We get a lot of alumni that come back. And, you know, a lot of it's great having the Derek Burnells and, and those guys come out and talk to the kids is great. Awesome. Evan Whitfield. But it's also I'm still trying to, you know, we're not on break. We're, we have games the next three days. So it's. I can't have 30 alumni come to practice and want to practice. Um, I don't ever turn anybody down because I, I do think that Brophy is a little different than a lot of schools and we are a community, we are a fraternity. And we, and so having those kids back is I think huge for my kids to see, um, you know, and, and I can relate to that because I grew up playing as a young kid with guys like you and Sasha and, and, and Chris Scotty. And so for, for those, for you guys to come back and be a part of my life, I think the kids feel the same way. It's a big, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I think it's always cool. I, we, I just had an alumni come back uh, from the military. Uh, uh, he actually played for me his freshman year, and then, or actually redshirted his freshman year because he blew out his ACL, 
uh, Jimmy Jones, and then <coughs> played Jones. one year with us, and then went to he played 2013 and he redshirted 2013, played 2014, and then 14. went to Glendale Community College in 2015. So he actually came by um, a couple weeks before we got shut down uh, from the coronavirus and just came and said hello, and we just shot the breeze, and he apologized for all his actions and stuff. And I don't remember. I mean, he was difficult at times, but not crazy difficult. It's something I'm used to. But he literally came back and, and apologized um, for his behavior and stuff, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's interesting the impact we have on kids, whether they're with us for a short while or move on. Well, think about think about the alumni that come back during our games and we do our alumni booths. You get the Carlos, you get the Cesars, you get Joe Jaju, and the kids love it. And we have to go tell them, hey, we're warming up, get away from the alumni. So yeah, I, I do think it's good for the kids to see that because it shows the impact that we're having. Because it is a bigger thing than just soccer. Let's, I mean, we all, we all want to win. We're competitors. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's that's what I want to do. I want to win. But I also want to see that, that that kid has a, a family and now he's running all state. You know that that makes me feel good. Yeah. The, the, well, I've been shoot. I'm heading to. I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years now. I mean, we don't have a bunch of Jessica McDonald's, but we do have a lot of Joe Jajus. Yeah, you imagine. So, so the situation, you know, with sports being shut down, and you're fortunate enough to finish your season and win that championship, and and winning championships like that create lifelong relationships. Let's not kid ourselves. That, that's an that's a big deal. <laughs> Um, that they'll remember forever because they may never win a championship again, but uh, they'll always always remember the you know this past championship and maybe the last two years championships. But um, softball at Phoenix College was undefeated, right? Twenty six and zero, the best start in the history of that program, which has already already won nine national titles. Right, Un- unbelievable program, and. Heinz, Heinz Mueller knows his players. He, he knows who's coming in. He, I remember when he came to my office one time, we, we were talking. I'm like, how good's your team? He goes, we're going to probably win the next three, three to four national championships. And they did. And that's how he, his recruiting is so in-depth. And so, you know, it's, it's amazing how he just has everything down to science as far as who's playing for him, what year, and four years back. Uh, for Juco, that doesn't make sense. But for him, that's been doing it for so long. He's so organized. He has it that way. But you imagine he's – He's he's won everything. He's trying to get he's, he wants to get ten national titles, and he has his best team he's ever had. He said, and then it's over. Twenty six and zero. Well, I think for him though, this is un, unknown territory for anybody. I mean, the the common person, sports. I mean, this is we're we don't know what's going on, so it's kind of that's what scares us. It's, it's unknown, but for a guy like him. I mean, he's already, he's done it all. <laughs> let's, let's be fair. I, I think that for him, it's more or less in his head. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong. He wants to win that 10. I mean, that's just the competitor in him. and He's a great coach, but he's also probably sitting there going, how do I, how do I keep my team understanding what's going on? How do I, how do I keep this family, this, this, this community that we built within softball, understanding what's going on and and the seniors that aren't going to walk or the, you know, um, like I said, it's always bigger than sports. There's a, there's a lot of other things going on. So, but I think for someone that's been around that long and done what he's done, this is, this is uh, probably a lot easier for him. Yeah. Not for those girls though. Um, well, and that's what, that's what's scary is they, they don't understand it. And you know what? Our our kids don't even, you know, the, the kids that are moving on don't understand. And so that you know, Hamilton baseball undefeated, uh, nationally ranked number one, and your season's over. Yeah, which and is uh, so. So this is what's going on. Um, I hear myself, Paul. Are my speaker or something? Um, no, sorry, I was uh, texting the Gatorade Player of the Year. Oh, so. Um, so all the softball girls got a year back. But Wait, 
they get an extra year now? Yeah. All spring sports. Oh, I didn't, even, even, I didn't e- even read that. Even the NCAA. So the NCAA gets the year back for all spring sports and the JUCO. So, but here's the problem. Softball has an army of girls coming in every year. So they increase the number of scholarships so they can handle the next class. And for division one or for JC, everything. No, I I don't know. I don't know about NCAA, but Juco increased the number of scholarships, but I think it happened with NCAA too, because they're going to have, they're going to have a problem. And I think they'll end up doing it. I don't, I don't know if they've done it yet, but they will end up doing it. But JC increased the number of scholarships. Oh yeah. I, I, it falls in lines with the NCAA too. too. Yeah. No, no, no. We're fall sports. So no. So we, that's, that's, that's kind of where they got all these people coming in, but I mean, they, they have more scholarships than we have anyway. They're going to have to fundraise like we do. Oh, yeah. I'm like, they, they can't afford what's, what's coming in, and, it, so, and that makes you, it concerning. Well, you also, you know, I talked to a guy the other day on the golf course um, where I worked, and he goes, oh, my kids, they got Division One scholarships, but do they take – maybe they give them extra year as a, as a senior. And I said, well, if you're 19, they're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. They won't do it because now you're talking about uh, a grown adult against a 14-year-old. It's not going to happen. I said, but why would you not let your kid go to Washington State on a full ride and take a redshirt year and get bigger, faster, stronger with the kids that he's going to be playing with anyways as opposed to go back to high school? It doesn't make sense and try to dominate. And and kind of the same thing in junior college. A lot of these sophomore girls probably already have scholarships. So why would you not leave and go further your education and get better with the with the team you're going to be with anyway? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't. I I don't know if I would come back and do that. Just simply on the fact that I, it, it's softball. It's not football. It's not basketball. You know, softball, soccer are very similar in the fact that going pro is very difficult. Yeah your education is a little bit more important. Do you want to be in school an extra year just to be in school so you can play softball? I don't know. That's up to you. Yeah. It, it, it's different when you're at Phoenix college playing softball because you have a good shot. You're going to win a national title and that's rare. And, uh, well, and that, that's a, I mean, that's the thing. They, those girls can come back and probably win one. So you're going to have a, you're going to have some girls that leave and some girls that stay and, uh, you know, well, you guys do you guys do pretty well in the athletic department over there and how to raise money and stuff. So I'm, we'll figure it out, I guess. To yeah. be honest, I mean, we are, well, we've done it with soccer for how long? Never ends. Um, forever. But uh, anyways, back to Paul Allen. So you, you are part of the, uh, is it Premier Soccer Club? Is that what you guys call it? Scottsdale Premier. Scottsdale Premier. And then there's AZ Premier. But you guys are Scottsdale Premier. Um so how many teams are at S- Scottsdale right now? I think 15. Okay. So here here's some questions. I'm curious cuz I'm I'm not in the mix of club. How, what's your expect expectations for tryouts? Are you guys starting for a June 1st and maybe push it to July? Where where are you guys at with that? Well, I, I don't have any. I uh I'm I'm revisiting my what I'm going to do with clubs, so. Okay. But I do think that tryouts are going to get pushed back statewide. Um, I, I don't think that really affects anything. It's a, it's a tryout. So I never did my tryouts in May. I mean, you're not too much older than me. And I, I feel like we tried out in in the summer. Yeah. It, for, it, it always got. Club, maybe even sooner. Maybe, maybe even like August. Who knows? But May is, I mean, the nice thing about soccer is we could talk. You can push it back one week, and people will still try out. Yeah, they. We'll see what happens. It's it's all goofy. I'm, I'm hoping. This I mean, I don't, I don't, end. I don't, I don't. Club, club is club to me. It's a, it's a place for kids to play and and get better as individuals, and 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 that's it. Leave it at that. I don't. Whatever. It doesn't matter when tryouts are. Kids are going to try out. And they're going to do their thing, and and whatever. Every every club tries out in the same week, anyways, which is kind of. Also weird to me, but yeah. Well, well, I hope uh, everything's going well with you and your family, and 
hopefully you and your community can get through this. Do I get to ask questions on this podcast? You can ask me anything you want, Paul. <laughs> Dave, What's up? How's, how's Phoenix College looking is what I want to know. Uh, as usual, we don't know. <laughs> it, we have extreme amount of talent. So basically, we have a lot of returners. I mean, we, we, we're returning eight eight starters. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Pretty it, close. It's it's a very talented talented team and and yeah goal, goalkeeper situation is a little weird but it's always been weird. It's it's weird in every position really because you just don't know who's going to come out. I mean, come out. I'm getting like I'm getting right. ten ten email slash calls a day, and I keep telling them I'm like, listen, we're gonna have to do a tryout. As soon as this thing is over, we're trying out immediately that that <laughs> next day. Um, Put teams together and have a four day tournament. We're 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 going right away, and um, I keep telling our guys uh, just be fit, because as soon as this is over, we're getting to work and we're going to do a fitness test right away, and we're going to see how they do on the the beep test, and we'll see who's really committed. So, um, the, well, we're not going to have much of a preseason, I'm guessing. So we're the the fitness side is going to have to be upped a little bit, but yeah, yeah. I, we we have talent. They know how to play soccer. Fitness is going to be number one. If they're fit, they're going to be fine. If they're not, they're in big trouble. It's oh. uh, at the, at this level, you just got to be fit. If you're soccer fit, you're you're in, you're in a good good I mean, situation. You can't, you can't play college and not be fit. Let's be fair. Yeah. <laughs> no, but a lot want to avoid that though. A lot a lot of kids enjoy being the top player in club where you don't have to run that much, and then they go to college and have a rude awakening where you're going to have to run like a madman. And if you can't do that, I don't care how te- uh, technical you are. You're not going to be able to survive. It's impossible. It's a different world. But, um, yeah, it, PC it'll, will always be good uh, because of where we're located. Uh, we ha- we're in the best location when it comes to soccer. We, anyone can get to us. We're downtown Phoenix for soccer is the place to be. So anyway, we still on the po- are, we, are we still on the podcast? We are, but we can close oh. it up. I got to put my my uh, my exit music. So yeah, <laughs> put the exit music on because I was going to talk to you about certain players. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So finishing off with "Ole Ole Ole" by the Bouncing Souls. We had Paul Allen on, and uh, thanks so much, Paul, for joining the podcast. And uh, best of luck at Brophy, and hopefully you can get the three peat. Assuming we can get out of this uh, lockdown we're in. Anyways, thanks for being on, Paul. And we'll, thanks, Dave. Appreciate we'll, it. Thanks for coming. <laughs>